Hey guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. This is just a little personal video log for Friday the 3rd of June. So, I'm sat in the conservatory today, basically because it's blooming cold outside. We've really enjoyed some nice weather for the last, uh, well, a couple of weeks really. And um, it's been really nice and sunny. I've been able to get out and enjoy the garden. I've been kind of, um, well, I've sort of finished, uh, I think finished the garden now. And I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, first, I want to show you this picture that I got sent last week. Um, when I put my video up last week of doing the mayonnaise, I think, um, somebody took a, a still of the picture and had a little Photoshop with it. And uh, instead of Rick presenting um, a video with a wolf t-shirt on, it's, it's a wolf presenting a video with a Rick t-shirt on. Um, but I just found that rather amusing. Um, so uh, thank you to the person who sent me that. That, was, that, was, that made my day. That was quite, uh, quite funny. Um, but I should point out, um, that wolf t-shirt I've had loads of comments on it lots of people really like the uh, the t-shirt or I think I was wearing a hoodie or was I wearing a t-shirt I can't remember it might have been a t-shirt actually um, but I had lots of people really like the t-shirt and I, I've as soon as I saw it I fell in love with it I've, I've been looking for ages for a kind of a wolf themed um, top you know like a, a hoodie or a t-shirt um, but I wanted a really kind of cool looking wolf and uh, something made, you know with a little bit of a, a Native American flavor and I've been looking and looking and and all the wolves I've seen have all been a little bit on the naff side not not particularly appealing and anyway one day I stumbled across this um, particular design instantly fell in love with it and uh, I decided there and then that I was going to get um, basically buy it straight away because I, I don't know if this happens to other people as well if you are after something and you have to kind of hunt around to find it and eventually you stumble across something exactly what you want and you don't get it there and then the chances are you go back to get it at a later date and it's gone it's not there and you'll never ever see it again so that experience has kind of been a, a, a kind of constant through my life so I decided as soon as I saw this wolf design I thought right I'm gonna get it and I went all the way and I got a, a hoodie and three t-shirts um, so um, I just thought I'd point out I'm not wearing the same old t-shirt every time you see me on um on a video and I've got this this wolf thing it's actually I've got separate t-shirts so I'm not being a smelly urchin <laughs> anyway um the garden I'm really happy with it it's uh, it's looking good I've pretty much finished as far as I'm concerned pretty much finished it now what I was going for was just a nice pleasant space that I could just go and be in um, just sort of kind of sit around in and um, that's pretty much what I've got and it's I know it's a little bit sort of Disney-fied um, I've got artificial grass I actually put artificial grass down and I know that makes me a horrible person um, but I kind of looked into it and because my entire um, courtyard is is literally it's all it's covered in cement it, it's it's all cemented over if I wanted real grass the amount of work involved in like you know I'd have to hire a pneumatic drill I'd have had to sort of get rid of these big slabs of concrete and rubble and hardcore and I just didn't want to go there and also because I got so many pots all over the grass um, I sort of figured that it just um, it was just going to be such a pain to maintain real grass and the thing is I, I, I did want a patch of green because it was just too much with everything being covered in the white stones so um, I, I eventually settled on some artificial grass now artificial grass has really come on in the past sort of I don't know how many years but I mean in the olden days you used to get like sort of astroturf it was this just horrible uh, green it was kind of a green that never actually appears in nature and it was all hard and bristly almost like a doormat um, but nowadays artificial grass is is almost I mean you literally can't tell that well you can tell the difference but it's so realistic um, that it's quite convincing and um, anyway I got a little sample um, of it and I thought yeah that's pretty good it actually felt kind of real um, even if you walk out there in bare feet it actually feels real underfoot which is quite cool um, so in the end I decided to put a small patch of uh, this green down and I think it does make uh, make a lot of difference and uh, just kind of 
enhances the overall feel of the garden. Like I say, it's a little bit Disney-fied, but um, I'm kind of going for the whole um, uh, maintenance-free um, thing. So, you know, the, at the very most, all I've got to do is a little bit of weeding now again in the pots, but everything's in pots. Um, so it's maintenance free and uh, you know it sort of looks after itself all of the shrubs and everything they don't take a lot of looking after um, it's kind of all sort of self-sustaining in, in you know in a kind of loose sort of sense now the other thing was um, the the Buddha over there somebody pointed out to me they said did you know it's actually really insulting to put uh, a, a statue of the Buddha on the ground. Now, in my last video where I showed the garden, I actually had this Buddha statue on the ground, and I thought, oh, this person is just being a bit pedantic. And I, I kind of looked it up, and actually, yes, it's a big deal. Um, anybody who knows anything about the Zen, um, you know, Zen Buddhism, and the practice of uh, uh, Zen, the Zen religion. I, I mean, over here in the Western world, it's kind of a Zen philosophy and a Buddhist philosophy. But over in a lot of Asia, it's actually a religion over there. Um, and I was being quite insulting by showing this Buddha on the ground. Anyway, I kind of think I've rectified that now because I've actually put him up on a pedestal. He's actually now on a um, on a plinth. So he's off the ground. And uh, I'm happy that I'm hopefully not um, being as insulting as perhaps I may have been in my last um, video. Although saying that, uh, the person just pointed out, he said, you know, fine in, in, you know enjoy it but don't show it on camera um if he's going to be on the ground and um so the chances are he's going to be incidentally shown on camera like like in this video here so like i said i'll put him on up on a plinth and uh, hopefully you know the buddha's always talking about find the middle path well that's that's the middle path for me that's uh he's not on the ground i've kind of made a little bit of a com compromise there uh found some middle ground that uh, we can work with and uh, actually, I think he looks better up on the plinth anyway, so uh, that's good. Kind of makes much more of a feature of the uh, of the water feature there. Now, while I was working on the garden, I came across uh, one of the. I think it is the most poisonous spiders in the country. I have one living in my garden, and uh, here's a little bit of footage that I took. And this is known as a false widow. Now, don't be too fooled by the word false. These are actually poisonous spiders. Uh, apparently, there was an incident uh, not so long ago where a guy had one of these spiders trapped in his top. I think he had a hoodie on, and uh, this thing was actually in the hood. And um, apparently, these spiders, they, they, they're not aggressive spiders. They won't attack unless they're provoked. Um, but uh, obviously, this spider was having a bit of a panic and it bit him on the neck apparently it bit him 10 times and the guy ended up collapsing and uh, having to, to go to hospital um, fortunately these uh, the bite from these things is not fatal apparently i looked it up and um, but you can get if you get a bite from one of these it's kind of it could be like a bee sting um, or a wasp sting so they're, they're pretty you know they're not they're not ideal but as you can see they're they're kind of they look like a black widow but they haven't got the um the, the markings on them but they're just kind of these, these these black um black bodies without any of the colors but there are various versions of them um so anyway yeah it's a bit of a bit of a shocker finding that in my garden but apparently they, they're quite common in england now and they're spreading um it started off they were there were only little pockets of them in certain areas of the country but now they're kind of almost everywhere um, so it's one to look out for. If you see one of these uh, false widow spiders, you might want to steer clear of them. Yeah, just thought I'd uh, bring that one to your attention. Now, I, I actually had another video that I was going to put up um, today because I, I tend to do uh, video releases on a Friday uh, these days. I don't know why. It just kind of seems to be the routine I've got into. Um, and I, I actually <laughs> I drove out into the Cotswolds um, uh, last week when we had all that beautiful sunny weather I actually drove out in an evening over to the Cotswolds mounted the GoPro on the roof of the van right up high and uh, I drove around for about three hours got loads and loads of footage and I was going to do another uh, treadmill kind of exercise machine video so it's basically you're just kind of driving along and you get to see all the countryside and everything 
And um, anyway, I drove around for about three hours, got home, and all of the footage was like, I'd mounted the GoPro in the wrong position. And um, I I got this kind of big sucker mount on the on the roof. And I, I'd put the GoPro right up in the air on this on this mount. And it was shaking around. It was just, it was like watching jelly. It was, it was just no good at all. So the next day I went back to the Cotswolds and I uh, drove around again for another three hours, but I'd mounted the camera uh, in a kind of bent forward position so that um, it was pressed almost up against the bodywork. And then I got a sponge and stuck it under the GoPro to absorb any shocks. And I got much, much better footage. footage. The problem is I drove around for about three hours and about nine minutes into the journey when I hadn't, hadn't actually reached the area I wanted to film, I, it was either a fly or a, or a bee or something went splat into the lens and you just end up with all this footage with this sort of smear right in the front of the, the, the footage. And fortunately I noticed it um, uh, about I don't know uh, two two and a half hours into the journey, I actually stopped just to make sure everything was all right, and I went up and I wiped the lens, and then I drove around for another thirty minutes or so, and then the sun set, and that was it. So um, I literally ended up with six hours of driving in the in the Cotswolds. I ended up with about thirty minutes of usable footage, so it's quite disappointing. Um, but the footage is fine and then I put it to music I used my own music this time this is stuff I've done on um, the uh, I use Logic Pro and I created it using synthesizers and various beats and things like that and it's kind of upbeat music um, and I uploaded it and then next thing you know I've got copyright claims on my own music um, can you believe it I was really really annoyed anyway so um, I there was two claims I got in touch with the two companies as well as going through the the usual procedure where you can um, contest it and uh, I got in touch with one company and then they, they lifted it straight away and I got in touch with the other company haven't heard anything from them and I'm now almost well, a week and a half still waiting for them to lift the claim so I can't really put it up until the copyright claims been removed which is quite annoying but there we go these things are sent to try us I suppose um, so anyway, I've waffled on long enough. Um, I'm going to do another video um, shortly, and I'll put that up at another time. Um, and I'm just going to be discussing the Brexit, which is this big referendum that we've got coming up um, in well on the 23rd of this month. Um, I should, I don't know if I should, but I will. Um, if you haven't registered to vote, you've got a few days left, I think. The last day to register to vote is the 7th of this month. So if you're in the UK and you want to vote in the referendum, you have to register uh, by the 7th. Um, so anyway, that's all I'll say on that for now, and I shall discuss the rest in a future video, hopefully. Um, right, so that's it from me. Like I said, it was just a little catch-up, uh, just a little, uh, little personal video long. And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, hopefully the weather might get better. I might be able to enjoy this garden a bit more. That would be nice. So until next time, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of the day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.